This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to the Voice of the Veteran on the Think Tech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Helen Dora Hyden. Joining me in the studio today is Ron Wiestefeld, Outreach Coordinator, Wounded Warrior Project, and a Marine veteran, and Anthony Chase from HOH808. -H he is a Navy veteran. Very excited to have you gentlemen. Thank you for being on my show. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Helen. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate so it. So today we're going to talk a lot about the Wounded Warrior Project and how they help our veterans in our community. Remember that our talk shows are streamed live on the internet from 12 o'clock noon to 5 o'clock p.m. every Wednesday weekday and earlier shows are streamed all night long. All our shows are streamed on Livestream.com. If you want the links to our live streams or previous broadcasts, which are available on YouTube.com, or if you want to subscribe to our programs or get on our mailing list and get our program advisories, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or a comment during one of our shows, please tweet us at ThinkTechHI. Ron? Again, thank you for being my guest, and thank you for your service above all. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, about the Wounded Warrior Project, and how you got involved. So, uh, 2015, I medically retired out of the Army. Uh, during that time, I did not know what I was going to do. It was a big surprise to me. I just re-enlisted in depth, and uh, we were in the middle of buying a house here in Hawaii. Oh, wow. So, uh, kind of a scary time and everything. And then during that transition process, there's not a lot that... Uh, one is being a veteran when you're going through, there's a lot of information that's told so you don't retain a lot of it. Uh, and then also, um, once you get out, I call it like the prison gate, uh, uh, prison gate concept where you have all these uh, amenities at your fingertips when you're in that you can easily have access to. But once you get out, it's kind of like the movie Shawshank Redemption at the end, uh, the prison gate shut, none of those resources are there for you, but nobody's waiting to guide you to what's next in your life. And there too. So, and those tap briefings are great, but they inundate you with so much information. You're kind of lost. I feel, uh, I absolutely understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So during during that time, uh, and you'd mentioned uh, two weeks ago in our episode at that brief uh, description, uh, the jewel of the vet centers. Yes. So I actually started using my post 9-11 and didn't know about this work study program and got introduced to the work study program and started doing uh, some outreach through the vet centers working with uh, Raleigh Alvarado and all that. And uh, during that, um, Wounded Warrior Project was kind of new to the island at the time. Uh, and I got to know some of the older coordinators that were out here, uh, Fita Dahana Ellis, who's our Warriors to Work. And when a job opportunity came up in Wounded Warrior Project here for the state of Hawaii, FITA kind of pulled me, uh, pulled me over there, uh, helped me out. I never interviewed before in my life or anything. It was straight from high school to high military. School to yeah, military. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was like interview, uh, yeah. the whole interview thing wasn't really happening. Uh, so she drilled me on interviews, uh, trained me up and everything, helped me write the resume, because the resume that you get when you get out uh, I like to joke, look like it was written in crown. <laughs> uh, you know, how many resumes do we write when we're active duty? None. None, none, none right? right? And a lot of times the resume is the entry. I found out even at the job fairs now, if you don't have a really solid resume, you're not getting past HR, right? And so a lot of veterans write military ease in their resume, and that's not what these employers are looking for. So I'm glad that you had assistance through Wounded Warrior to help you. That's awesome. Yeah, because uh, the resume I came out with, I thought it looked, I thought it looked good, but uh, <laughs> I stand corrected. Uh, but it's because we don't know how to transition yeah. uh, the verbiage from military yeah. over to civilian. So I was an infantry guy in the army. Yeah. Uh, all I knew was kick down doors, <laughs> uh, go can camping, shoot guns. Yeah, can shoot guns. <laughs> uh, you know, but that really don't translate over into like yeah. the civilian. But when I yeah. met up with a uh, with Fita for our Warriors to Work, she she was like, "Well, you were an NCO, yeah. uh, leadership, leadership, yeah. uh, management, Supervisor. time management. Yeah. So all those, but that that was 
verbiage I didn't understand how to transition, yeah. which is a big, um, it can be a big uh, offset for veterans who are getting Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad you had the assistance. My dad was a tanker in the Army. That did not translate well. Yeah. You know, can drive tank. Good luck finding a job with that, Dad, right? <laughs> and a lot of veterans coming out do not know how to translate. Actually, uh, Google started a new app that military members can download, mm. and it will translate the verbiage, their military uh, wow. stuff, over into employable, marketable skills. So I think that was a great thing. I just saw that recently advertised. So I was pretty excited about that. But still, it's it's better to get one-on-one -on -one help, especially with somebody that's caring like your gal was with you. That's amazing. So let me ask you. So Wounded Warrior Project, who is eligible to use your services? So eligible for services are veterans who served on or after uh, September 1st, 2011. And the one misconception is a lot of veterans will sit there and think, well, they have to have a physical wound to seek services from us. And that's not the case. Uh, you know, we get deployed, we go down range. We're not the same. Uh, we're not the same person as we were before we went as when we come back. So if we see a deployment on there uh, after the date, you know, we'll, and there's no VA disability rating, we'll give benefit of the doubt to the warrior because we know that even though they might not have a disability uh, rating for sure. uh, PTSD or something like that, that we know it's kind of, it's on the fact of preventing that. So sure. maybe it hasn't gotten to the worst, but we'll give the benefit of the doubt to prevent it from uh, getting worse and then also at, if they need any assistance. Yeah, and some of them are in transition, right? So yep. some of them have filed claims, and sometimes it takes a while for the claim process mm -hmm. to work Perfect. and getting their disability through the VA. So, you know, they're in limbo and they don't know what to do. And so I think that's a great stopgap measure. Do you work with the uh, wounded, what is that, warrior assistant, warrior transition oh, program? Oh, the WTB? Yeah, WT. Yeah, so we work with. Uh, I work with WTB, I go up there, I give uh, briefs and stuff to veterans who are going through there. Um, if they're going through WTB, then the only thing they have to show is either orders, uh, sending them to WTB will work, because a lot of times you know, they don't have their ERB yet or yeah, anything. Yeah. So either orders that WTB, uh, DD-214. Uh, sometimes too they have, um, they might have their VA disability uh, rating depending on how far into the system, so we'll just that and when none of the information is shared yeah it's just for us to know on our end so we know if we have to for an event if I have to make sure it's ADA accessible sure, sure. or if I have to get a for like a scuba diving event do I have to get an instructor who can do an adaptive scuba oh sure and I wanted to touch briefly on that you know a lot of veterans um, when they when you ask the general public what a disabled vet looks like I get a lot of this old man wheelchair, missing limb, and that's why I kind of do what I do, because I really want to break the misconception. I'm a 100 percenter. You never know it by looking at me, right? And there's a lot of us vets that have unseen disabilities, whether they be psychiatric, whether they be whatever that's unseen. It just, people need to be more conscious and aware that there's a lot of veterans out there that do not have visible scars or wounds from their service and just to be mindful of that. So tell me a little bit about some of your key programs that you got going on in the Wounded Warrior Project. So some of our programs that we offer uh, out here are Warriors to Work. Uh, so Fita the Hanel, she'll help with resume writing, job interview preparations. She'll do as many preps as you need. I think she did like 20 or 30 on me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she'll, she'll help prep you. And then if you get the employment, or when you get employment, she can help uh, with making sure that you're successful in that transition. So if you need uh, boots for a uh, construction job you got, or maybe some, maybe some clothes to get you to uh, your first check, so that way you're successful in your transition to that new job. That's amazing, because I have met veterans that have served 20 plus years, and they've worn the uniform, and to get them to go buy a suit, they have no idea their uniform's been their suit, right? So it's a lot of fun to help them transition over 
and uh, there's a, a couple organizations, especially for female veterans out there, that talk about you know getting them dressed for success. A lot of the colleges have loan closets or clothes closets to help people get to that next level for their first interview, whatever. So it's good to know that Wounded Warriors has that for their uh, potential candidates and, and helps them be successful. Yep. And then uh, and then Ralph Paris, you know oh, him. Yeah, 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 so right, he's yeah. our he's our benefits guy. He's over in E Wing yeah. of uh, Tripler, and he helps with uh, dis filing for disability claims, or if you you have a claim already, but you want to um, you want to get an increase, you can help with that. Or if you don't agree with your uh, VA disability rating, he can help with the appeal. I want to touch on Raphael for a minute. I personally have experience with him because he helped my fiance personally, and I kind of have had service work under my belt. So I kind of went and interviewed all the people in that whole E wing to see how they did it. <laughs> and Raphael is one of the only service officers that spends a lot of quality time with his veterans and their families. And he will go page by page looking through the medical records. I have yet to meet any other service officer out there that does that. And that's why I entrusted him with my John and he, my John Adams. And he got a really good return, and I, I cannot speak highly enough of Raphael. I, I send everybody I know to him because I trust what he does, and I was super excited that you guys picked him up as your service officer. A lot of people go, you got to be a wounded warrior to use him, and I'm like, no, he's a veteran service officer, open to anybody, so you don't have to be part of anything. He's there for us. So <coughs> I, that's a great find you guys got in him. Thank you. And what then, else you got going on? So um, my side of the house, we're, I'm alumni, so I'll do a bunch of the events and everything that go on here around the island. So this Saturday we have a pillbox cleanup, so we do do some community service events, along with uh, fun events too. So we have... Um, What's pillbox cleanup? What's that? The pillbox is up at Camp Polyuma. Oh, okay, um, okay. Up at Makakilo. And, and that's something that Mr. Chase does, right? Anthony does kind of clean up like the 808 H, 808, H-O-H 808. Yes, I butchered his name last week. I get that's to, quite yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, man. So that's <clears throat> kind of what you do, right? Is kind of cleanups and, and sustainability and just all that. So yes, that kind of ties hand in hand with what you guys do. Mm -hmm. So I met Tony, uh, I met Tony a few years back at the vet center. Me and him uh, were working together over there at the West Oahu Vet Center. Uh, he always challenged me to push myself and everything, and we just had a great relationship. And uh, he he does park cleanups and everything, and it's something that, uh, as Wounded Warrior Project out here, we'll help we'll help him with some park cleanups and everything to just help the community out. I think it's great veterans being active in the community, you know, um, bonding with other veterans because a lot of times. What we find is veterans that isolate after they get out, they miss that camaraderie ship. Mm -hmm. And having these different organizations, you will find your place. I really believe that, you know, and, and just getting back into a group of people that believe in helping one another. And that's what we're all about. And so tell me what else is going on in Wounded Warriors. Uh, tomorrow evening we have uh, a dinner for our Project Odyssey, which is a, uh, another program that we offer. and it's through our CSRP team. So they're coming out to explain about the Project Odyssey to uh, some of the warriors at a, uh, at a dinner tomorrow night. CSRP, what's uh, that? Combat Stress Recovery Program. Thanks. So A lot of acronyms, right? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you forget that it's... Uh, so what they do is like our Project Odyssey. So they'll take, we suggest going out as a single, uh, singles first, and they'll take the veteran out. Okay. And they'll kind of get to learn about their trigger points and everything sure. for PTSD. And they also get to make connections. They do fun activities nice. through the week and all that. And all these programs are paid for by Wounded Warrior Project. There's no cost out to the veterans. So for our Project Odysseys, uh, travel, uh, lodging, food, it's all, it's all covered. Awesome. That is great to know. We've got to take a quick short break uh, just to... Hold that thought, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more after the break. Uh, but we're going to take a break. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, and this is Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking here with Ron and with Anthony, and we from eight H O. I'm going to get this right, you guys. H O H eight O eight. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of the story.
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Map. We're back, we're live. I'm Helen Dora Hyden and this is Voice of the Veteran on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking with Ron and with Anthony and we are learning all about how Wounded Warriors Projects helps the veterans in the community. And when we took break a second ago, I just wanted to correct one thing. Ron is not a Marine vet. That was my fault. I'm so sorry. You're an Army vet. Hua, not Ura. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure everybody knew that. <laughs> not that it matters, but it does matter. I'm an Army vet. So. <laughs> but thank you again. And tell me a little bit more about your, uh, what you do in community outreach and as far as the impact it has on the community. What have you seen that Wounded Warriors has done to really just kind of community whole in support of them? Yeah, so my, uh, as an outreach coordinator, I'm the connection piece of the organization. So it's about connecting the Warriors to family support members and vice versa family support members to the Warriors. And connecting Warriors also to our programs that we offer or even connecting them to the right resources. So if it's something Wounded Warrior Project doesn't offer, we're, we're not about uh, making the veteran fail. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting the veteran to the right resource. Mm -hmm. So connecting them to the right resource and also uh, connecting them to the community. So when these when the veteran gets out, a lot of times we'll get out. We don't know what we're, we don't know what we're going to do. We have a certain uh, like we hold ourselves to a certain standard. We have a certain way of looking at things, but sometimes that's that's not understood by uh, the regular civilian community. Right. Right, right. So we feel like we get pushed away. Um, you start going in on yourself and then you, you're not seeking help. And then next thing you know is you're just sitting on the couch, surfing Netflix, drinking beer, and not doing anything. And Wounded Warrior Project, we try to stop that. We try to connect them to resources, to uh, one another, to community and really just spark an interest. What's, what's your next interest? You know, these events aren't just about going out and having a dinner or just going scuba diving and having fun, but it's about connecting them to other family support members, to other family support members yeah. who are possibly dealing with the yeah. same yeah. thing that the veteran's going through, and then introducing the veteran to other veterans, and then maybe sparking an interest, maybe taking them out scuba diving, they find out that, hey, I. I really love scuba diving. I want to learn how. I want to learn how to be or be a scuba diver. Sure. Uh, we send some of them to the Guitar for Vets that yep, Raleigh yep. and Travis run. I'll send I'll send veterans out that way, and then you know they get they find a new passion in music and everything, and it kind of gets them away from drinking. Yep. That they're being more productive with their uh, free time. I have a program that uh, DAV, one of our past national commanders, started doing therapy on his own was skiing down a mountain in Colorado. Now it is a huge endeavor. They had blind veterans skiing. They had mm. all these different types of people coming out that never dreamed in a million years they could ever do this. And that's what it's about, right? It's, it's about learning that you have a next chapter in your life. Yep. Just because you're disabled or... Um, you're not disabled forever and you're, you know, it's, it's overcoming the physical challenges, but to, to open up their idea of life does go on 
and that you are valuable and you are you can be productive just like you were when you're active duty and it's just showing them a different path a different chapter i really believe that in my heart you know so all right so tell me how to register for the wounded warrior program so all you have to do is go to uh woundedwarriorproject.org you'll see over on the right hand side there's a uh a button says register and then you'll just register veteran will register as alumni none of that information is shared that they uh, that they give us it's just so we know if there's uh, when we accept them to an event you know is there any accommodations that we have to make for that event it's not shared with the VA or anything it's not going to I know the big stigma is yeah, yeah. if I give this information out yeah. it's going to keep me from getting a job or anything yeah. it all stays in house uh, and then after that they can about two to three days they'll receive a email saying if they've been accepted or not, or if they need more information. After that, they'll receive every Tuesday comes out at 4 p.m. here is the post that's, uh, that'll have all the events that are going on around the island, around the state. So they'll register for there. After that, they have a family support member. It doesn't have to be a wife or anything. It's whoever they deem is a family support member to that's them. Uh, they can register them also. And then they're, they're also eligible for our services That's great. as a family support member and then they can they can also sign up for events because I know a lot of times I, I was guilty of this when I when I first signed to Wounded Warrior Project it was my wife who was actually signing me up for the events <laughs> I was I was getting emails and I'm like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I've been to a couple events for disabled vets and one was in Alabama where if you had uh, there was for blind veterans mm. so if you were able to see it they would blind you so that you could experience what these veterans went through amazing wow. amazing event I hit more trees that weekend I swear <laughs> but I learned to use my other senses I got a real appreciation of what our blind veterans go through so give us your resource center phone number and then I want to chat with mr. Anthony over here the last few minutes we've got go ahead and give us our resource information the, phone so number the resource center you. phone number is going to be 904-405-1213 I want to thank you again for all the wonderful information about the Wounded Warrior Project. And I extend invitation to any of your staff, any of your veterans that have been through the program that want to be on this show, please reach out. And I'm always, this is the voice of the veteran. This is our voice to explain what we've done in the community, how we've connected people, how it's, it's, the experience has been for us, and how we want to help others. So, Mr. Anthony, you sat there so patient and quiet. Thank you, ma'am. Tell me a little bit about your organization. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's a uh, HOH 808, uh, short for Hui O Ho'o Honua. Uh, it's an organization I started uh, uh, after I retired. Uh, I went back to school. I uh, went to uh, University of Hawaii, got my bachelor's and master's in uh, social work, oh. and it gave me the confidence. Uh, to uh, start my own organization because uh, just like Ron here, and it sounds like you yourself, uh, when we got out of the military, we weren't done uh, with serving our community, serving uh, those who around us. Uh, so I saw something that needed to be done. And uh, you know, that old adage, when you point a finger, you got three pointing right, right back at you. So I was always like, oh, who's gonna clean uh, uh, the shoreline of Pearl Harbor, who's going to clean it up, who's going to, and, you know, I finally I said, yeah, it's going to be me. And so I started my own organization. Uh, we're about uh, coming up on four years old. Uh, we are a 501c3. Uh, <clears throat> I myself and retired uh, Navy CB. Uh, I was a, a senior chief petty officer, uh, did uh, three tours in Iraq. Wow. And uh, one two were in uh, Bosnia back in the mid '90s, and uh, so one of the things I I, I want to do is uh, uh, one of the programs that we're doing cleaning up because uh, when I went back to school, uh, learning uh, the Hawaiian history and talking to uh, the native Hawaiian people, uh, my teachers, my kumus, you know, it, uh, uh, I really became a like changed overnight uh, and I wanted to learn all I could about Native Hawaiian history and uh, the land at one time here the Aina is so sacred as still is uh, to this day but it's uh, has been traumatized by misuse you know pollution sure. 
and uh, so a lot of trauma. And so uh, there was uh, one day I was meeting with uh, uh, my chair of my board of directors and uh, uh, a, a state representative from the DLNR Department of uh, yeah. Land and Natural Resources. Uh, and the monthly siren went off for the, for the uh, test. test. Mm -hmm. And I froze, you know, because of uh, suffering from, uh, had, at that time, uh, uh, PTSD of the sirens, the Scud missile attacks during the invasion of war. And I go through my grounding and I check it. And uh, Auti Jeffers, he's from DLNR, said, Tony, that's your connection with the Aina, the trauma, you know, and the land has been traumatized. You've been traumatized. Veterans have been traumatized. There's the connection. And I was like, like, wow. the, yeah. you know, everything opened up. So one of the things I like to do in working with veterans and uh, others, and I'm a social worker, so I work with all of that have been traumatized, you know, and, and uh, but being close to the veteran, trauma, healing trauma, you know, the land, healing veteran, veteran, healing the land. Uh, so that's, uh, has become very important to us, uh, working with veterans and, and, Ron, and Ron has been just so incredible. Absolutely uh, appreciate us out. what you're doing. Well, thank you. So because yeah. time is short, yes, I'd like to invite you in two weeks oh, wow. to be on the next show. Thank you. So that we can explore more. And yes, please feel free to invite any veterans that you want to bring on the show with you okay. or any other organization. And we'll just keep this party going. Let's keep it going. <laughs> <All> <laughs> keep right. it going. Okay. Thank you thank for you, your Helen. service. Thank you so much. Very thank you much. for yours. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, we are out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Helen Dora Hyden and this is Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech Live Streaming Network Series. We've been talking with Ron West uh, I had it, Westerfeld. <laughs> and he's the outreach coordinator for Wounded Warrior Project. I've been practicing all week and, and how they help veterans in their community. And to Anthony Chase with HOH808. I got it, finally. Thank you both again for being my guest and for your service absolutely from the bottom of our heart and your continued service to our veterans in this community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are, um, so we just want to just say thank you and reach out to you guys and to the community. Please make sure that you get their information and reach out to both of them. So we are going to just thank our broadcasting engineer, our floor manager, and Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts this all together. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. ThinkTech will be back tomorrow for the next show in our ThinkTech live streaming network series. So please tune in and tell your friends to tune in then. If you want to get on our email and social media program advisories, click the link on thinktechhawaii.com. If you'd like to be a guest, underwriter, or volunteer, or if you want to join us in our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts on Ustream.tv or YouTube.com, just go to thinktechhawaii.com. Go there and tell and to our Facebook page and tell them that you like us. We'd love to, for you to like us. And of course, I'll see you in two weeks with Anthony Chase here and our next episode of Voice of the Veteran on ThinkTech Hawaii. I'm Helen Dora Hyden. Aloha, everyone.